so time series so the first thing that i am going to tell you is that when there was already techniques like regression okay what is the need of time series analysis okay because when you already have regression in place what's the use of time series analysis why do one uh, has to learn time series analysis uh, and how is it different from regression or uh, linear regression okay so in a linear regression you have y you have a bunch of x1 x2 x3 x4 and so on right yeah no no yes yes so so in a regression framework you have your dependent variable you have a bunch of independent variables right and then you build a model y is a function of your x1 x2 uh, you know n number of variables right so this is what is uh, regression similarly in the case of a classification you know logistic regression you also uh, do that the same the uh, same functional form remains except the fact that um, the data type you know is a different thing there and the f function uh, the link function or the regression function is also different all right a question is why you need time series data okay well there are occasions in which the regression analysis is not a very suitable analysis okay uh, and in such cases uh, one has to go for what is known as an univariate time series analysis and i'll talk about what is an univariate so uh, let's take a case okay let's take a case uh, for example we have uh, you know stock prices okay let's denote stock prices as st so st is the stock prices and we want to predict the stock price based on certain factors okay so what could be the independent variable what could be the independent variable tell me hello yes 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 yeah i mean see you want to predict stock price of a particular stock okay let's say you want to predict the stock price of infosys okay so what are the things that you are going to take company name won't be a factor right what are the factors yeah i'm saying what are the factors oh, oh sorry uh, one second are you able to view my desktop by the way ah uh, <laughs> you, 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 you should have told me right you should yeah are you able to see now yeah so yeah so i had already written 
what a number of things okay okay no problem i just repeat okay so here is regression you have y and then you have a bunch of independent variables like x1 x2 x3 x4 and so on okay and y is a function of x1 x2 x to the n right so that's a regression analysis right similarly in logistic regression in other classification techniques you uh, uh, have uh, similar uh, functional forms right in the case of stock price prediction if you want to predict stock price what are the factors that you will be wanting you will be wanting uh, you will be getting uh, uh, the factors which yeah yeah you want the price that's that's the dependent variable but what are the independent what could be the independent variables yeah okay 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 so if you want to find out or you want to predict the infosys stock price for next couple of days you probably would be wanting the uh, you know the quarterly revenue the quarterly revenue of infosys right uh, the market cap maybe that's one thing or maybe you will you will want some macroeconomic value let's say a gdp gdp of india uh, you may be wanting to know the inflation rate i mean these are not uh, factors which uh, directly impact infosys price infosys stock price but let's say these are you know certain variables you can try out let's say okay maybe you can also try out us uh sorry a dollar dollar to uh, uh, rupee conversion rate uh, euro to rupee conversion rate because these are values which impact uh, stock price uh, sorry infosys pro pro profitability right right so you could have you could have uh, co company specific factors then macroeconomic factors uh, uh, employment or you know employment inflation uh, gdp of the country in which the company is operating so market sentiment uh, market index okay so these are uh, certain uh, independent variables that you can try out in the model right and you can run a regression analysis the problem with this analysis is that stock price changes on a daily basis right stock price on a daily basis it changes right but how do you get gdp how do you get gdp gdp doesn't change on daily basis right it doesn't change on daily basis right even, even if it change it's not get uh, it doesn't get reported on a daily basis right similarly inflation data you also won't get on a daily basis right so you have stock price here on daily basis and then you have gdp inflation not available on daily basis right that means so how can you run a regression with a dependent variable which is uh, varying on a daily basis and a uh, bunch of independent variable which are uh, you know uh, which which are varying on a quarterly basis yeah which are not varying on on a daily basis all right so that's one problem right that's the problem number 1 that's the problem number 1 the problem 2 is that um, the regression models are good for long term forecast okay a regression is good for long term forecast whereas for short term forecast many 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 times regression is not a good uh, technique to forecast for the next few days or something like that okay because okay so that's exactly where the time series analysis comes into picture that's exactly where time series analysis 
is an alternative technique. Okay. One of the feature of time series analysis is that uh, it uh, it models for the trend in the data for the pattern in just single variable. Okay, so it's that's why it's called univariate time series. Okay, that means if you have stock price, you don't need anything else to predict stock price. You just have stock price. Let's say Infosys stock price is 100 today, 100, uh, 5, maybe for yesterday, 110, 120 and so on. So using the historical data value, you will be able to predict the future value of Infosys stock without having to look at the other factors like GDP inflation and, and so on. Right? And that's why it's known as univariate time series. Univariate means one variable. Right? So that's the basic difference between your regression based analysis and time series analysis. Okay? Many times, many times, many times you can actually include the time uh, series category values in regression also okay uh, like you can have a model something like the yt equal to yt minus 1 plus another variable xt okay plus error term that means you are using the time series you are also using some factors okay you are also using some factor xi okay independent variables okay so that could be also possible. So we'll we'll see that later on. So let's focus on only the time series, univariate time series. Okay. That is called uh, the um, not the cross consonal. Uh, that is called uh, UCM. UCM. Okay. One second. All right. So we'll see what is univariate time series. Okay. All right. So when you analyze univariate time series, there are two ways to do it. Okay. One is more statistical way. And the other one is more like uh, a computational way. Okay. Statist yeah. Statistical ways use some sort of some sort of a regression estimation. Okay. It's some sort of regression or estimation. Some variation. Okay. Variation of that. The computational way is simply takes the previous value and add it up do something about it okay and then finds the value there is no um, est statistical estimation as such okay uh, so this okay and uh, some of the techniques that you might have already heard in statistical uh, ways of doing forecasting the techniques like AR, MA, uh, ARMA, ARIMA are the techniques that you will find in the uh, no, no, not hall to enter. Okay, these are these are the techniques which are statistical ones. Okay, the com the computational way is where you have exponential smoothing. Okay, or exponential smoothing uh, where you have hall to enter and winter method and all that uh, techniques come into picture. Okay, the main difference between these two things is that. Um, you, you use all the statistical hypothesis in AR, MA, ARIMA and all that. But in exponential smoothing, you don't use anything. It's more like uh, taking the historical data, uh, finding the pattern and just, uh, you know, forecasting for the future. You don't have to uh, find some parameters. So this is more non-parametric type. 
and whereas AR, MA are more parametric type. Okay. All right. Yes, 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 yes. So you will be uh, estimating a number of parameters in those cases, whereas in exponential smoothing, it just, uh, yeah, no, there is no, uh, there is, um, there is no um, uh, parameter estimation there. Yes, there is, there are some sort of, uh, you know, some computational, uh, computation that happens, some of the parameters are not known, like smoothing parameters are not known uh, a priori or it's not known uh, beforehand but there is no uh, um, uh, but it, it's different it's dis different from the statistical estimation okay you don't have to uh, know the p value the t value and all that you don't use hypothesis testing for all that okay all right and uh, the statistical techniques they are more complicated okay uh, whereas this is much simpler uh, this is more accurate and this is less accurate okay uh, this takes time This can be very simple, uh, so this can take very less time. No, no, the uh, time taking time taken to uh, build a model. Okay, all right. So now let's go ahead and learn a bit of. We start with this one, okay? A R M A Arima. And then we'll go to exponential smoothing. Okay. So the first model that we'll learn is the uh, autoregressive AR model. Okay. Okay. The word auto itself means that we are some sort of regressing with the same variable. Okay. That's why it's called auto and then regression right so let's say y is a, is a variable yt okay yt let's say just talk some sort of a stock price or something like that okay the daily stock price okay then the lag of yt we write it as yt minus 1 okay and then the lag of yt minus 1 is yt minus 2 right so we can have a lag operator as well, right? So lag of yt is equal to yt minus 1 and then lag of is equal to you understood, right? Okay. Okay, so Where L is equal to is a lag operator. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So it's clear up to now. Okay. So the AR model is very simple. Okay, the AR model is nothing but yt equal to yt minus one plus an error term, and that is also a constant. That is also a constant value. Okay. So con mu is a constant. This is the lag, and this is the. Uh, error term okay or if you write it clearly uh, y t minus 1 plus right that 
yes yes this is intercept and this is independent of time so this is not mu t this is not changing with time this is same for all t got your point okay now at this point i will introduce this concept of stationarity okay so in time series uh, the concept of stationarity is very important to understand okay so stationarity what is stationarity okay uh i'll show you some graphs what do you see the difference what is the difference between these two plots hello hello mm, right yeah I, i can i can hear you okay so when there when something is in pattern it need not something is in uh, flat it need not be uh, that it doesn't have any pattern it has some pattern but it it is not upward trending right it is not upward trending whereas in the case of this one second graph this is upward trending right it's a trend it's 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 a trend it's a trend right in time series analysis where uh, this has to be captured okay this has to be captured before you are going ahead with the uh, analysis okay whether your uh, data has some trend or not okay if the data has some trend and uh, i'll wait wait if you have trend then the normal statistical techniques are not going to work okay the, the, the arima model ar ar ma model are not going to arima is going to work but uh, there are there are ways to uh, you know get rid of the trend but when there is a trend then this cannot be modeled easily okay so this has to be reported first so whenever you are doing time series analysis make sure you uh, get rid of this trend so stationarity conditions are like that the expectation of yt is mu expectation nothing but the mean okay the variance of yt is also constant the autocorrelation is also constant did you understand okay okay i'll i'll explain the mean so if you look at the data the mean no matter which section you take in the data if you take this data or this data the mean in this case is exactly same as the mean here right but if you take this huh, but if you take here the mean is here if you take here the mean is here so the mean right yeah so this is non stationary data okay yes 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 okay oh, wait no 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 let me complete let, let me complete let me complete okay so that could there could be other uh, situations of non stationarity also okay let's say
okay the data that you can see on the screen okay so you can see that the mean seems to be constant like the mean is almost here right but the variance is changing right here the variance is this much here the variance is this bigger here the variance is this bigger here also this bigger and then here also it's small so the variance is same here the me it is mean is constant variance is okay this also is a non stationary okay all right what is autocorrelation it is just the correlation of yt when yt minus const so the correlation between yt with its own lag should also be constant lags yeah hmm. see normally okay so normally what do we do we take correlation of two variable right x1 and x2 right here we are not taking two variables we are taking the same variable with it the same lag i mean the the lags of the same variable so variable is only y is that we are taking it the correlation with the lag wait 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 i am saying that wait so i am saying that this is a condition in stationarity that's why i am explaining okay i am saying that i am first try, trying to explain you what is autocorrelation autocorrelation is nothing but the correlation of the variable y with it own lag is called autocorrelation so autocorrelation is correlation with one lags okay and that has to be constant that has to be constant for stationarity okay now these things uh, will be given out by the statistical software so you don't have to worry okay you can check stationarity you can check for stationarity very easily in most statistical software okay and you don't have to worry uh, you can you can easily see that there are also some statistical tests to see that's exactly that's why that's why that's why you, you should understand the theory very well because you need to explain explain right all right so we uh, you know we saw what is uh, an ar model so yt is just that mu plus yt minus 1 plus epsilon okay and another term called white noise this has to be also understood okay i i i uh, i i'm sorry there is a parameter here okay phi 1 okay so i i written it wrongly also here also it should be phi 1 okay all right so white noise is a case where 
the data is completely random completely random okay so white noise is completely random so it's totally unpredictable so one of the condition for the error term here is it's white noise so the mean of the error term is 0 the variance is 1 so it's strictly white noise okay all right so this is the functional form of air model the ma model yes yeah this uh, yeah this equation related to air model there's something called there's something called uh, moving average model okay or in short known as ma ma model MA model is given by yt equal to mean plus pi 1, let's say, uh, okay, so instead of the previous term or previous lags, we are using the error term here, okay. No, not not in not in not in place of mu in place of y t minus one. You got it right. Okay, so this is known as the moving average. Okay, and all we need to do is to find out the mu one. So this is the estimate, and of course uh, the uh, intercept. But then you know intercept is somewhat adjusted inside, so we'll see. So we'll see about the intercept later on. And it can be of any order. So this is known as AR1 model. Okay, this is AR1 because there is only really one lag. You can have AR2 also, right? Similarly, this is MA1 model. Okay. So what is AR2 model? AR2 model is YT plus mu plus. Right. Similarly, MA2 Sorry. Okay. So this this is AR and this is this is AR and MA. When you combine AR and MA, we get what is known as an ARMA model. So this combines AR and MA. Okay, so ARMA model, ARMA could be this like this, mu plus So you have as a lag of the same variable So you have the lag of the same variable, you also have the error term Right, so it combines So it combines the uh, lag and the uh, error term uh, in this and uh, you get an ARMA model, right? You get the ARMA model. Okay. So, there is another extension to it called ARIMA. Okay. So, that is, uh, we will we'll learn about it. Okay. So, you got the basic introduction of time series, right? This this is the functional form of time series. You got the basics, right? You got an introduction. Exactly. Exactly. So, if you look at uh, a time series book, it is like 300 pages. So, and uh, so, uh, so that's what uh, the beauty of yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so no problem. So what you need to do is, I've given you the basics. I'll give you some materials to read, okay? You read the material, okay? You read the material and write down your questions. Wherever you have questions, write down the, write down the questions, okay? Um, and just send it to me. Whenever you have time, before the next class, you just send it to me. I'll clarify and then we'll also discuss your questions in the class, okay? And we'll, we'll learn more about... So in the next class, we'll learn more about these models, individual models. We'll learn about more tech, tech, uh, terms like uh, autocorrelation function, partial autocorrelation function, how to select the number of lags, how to know that whether it's AR1 model, AR2 model, uh, or whether it's uh, how to select whether it's an AR model or an MA model, or how to know that whether it's an ARMA model, when do we go to ARIMA model, okay, so this becomes very complicated later on, okay, so first you have to go through the theory very well to be able to understand it well, okay, so this is, a, I, I just kept this class, sorry, yeah, so I kept it very simple uh, for this class and very short so that you will get uh, a bit of introduction about what time series analysis and then we'll go more depth in the depth of the theory. Okay. You got my point? All right. Right. Yes. Yes, so go through the theory material that I will go, I will giving you, and then once we finish the theory, we'll also do do it using R or SAS. Okay.